Good morning to everyone. Um, I want you to remember one important thing here in St. Helena Bay and wherever you are if you're watching this video. Um, and that is that the good Lord is with you. He never leaves you. You may rely on him. And we are going to talk about that in this morning. But first let's turn to the Lord and, and pray to him. Lord, thank you that we can come to you in this beautiful morning and know that you are with us and uh, that you are on our side. Lord, in the face of the COVID pandemic, Lord, we come to you and bow before you and pray, Lord, that you would bless us and that you would have mercy on us, Lord. With so many people dying, Lord, we are in distress, we are in grief, and it saddens us and it fills us with fear. And therefore we pray, Lord, that you, would, that you would guide us, that you would keep us, that you would protect us. And that you would keep your arms around us. Thank you that we can rely on you and know that you are our God in the face of the crisis. Lord, please come now through your word and come and strengthen our faith and bless us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, lately I've been uh, contemplating, is the word, I've been thinking um, about the concept of allegiance. To have an ally, someone whom you can trust, someone in whom you have faith, someone that will be able to help you, someone with whom you can go into an allegiance and uh, who will be loyal to you. Um, and as I was thinking about it, I was thinking in terms of theology and the Bible and so on, and I remember the story of Ahaz, the king of Judah, and uh, how he, how he um, created his allegiance with his helpers around him. And uh, the prophet Isaiah came to Ahaz to bring him a message. And this is the passage we're going to read from the Bible. Now, normally we read this passage just before Christmas, and it's a well-known verse in this passage. You will hear it. Um, that reminds us of Christmas. Um, and we normally read it during the Advent, just before Christmas. But uh, if you really understand the history and the context of this uh, chapter, it uh, brings you a different message. And uh, this is what I want to say. To convey to you. So uh, we are going to read from Isaiah chapter 7 and uh, we read from verse 1 up to verse 14. When Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, and King Rezin of Aram, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, was the king of Israel, they marched up to fight against Jerusalem, against uh, Ahaz. But they could not overpower it. And now the house of David was told, Aram has allied itself with Ephraim. That's Israel. Um, so the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken, as the trees of the forest are shaken in the wind. They were scared. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out you and your son Shear Yashub, um, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct um, of the upper pool on the road to the washerman's field and say to him, Be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Rezan and Aram and of the son of Ramalia. Aaron, Ephraim, and Ramaliah's son have plotted your ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah, let us tear it apart, and divide it amongst ourselves, and make the son of Tebiel king over it. Yet this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Now listen. It will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aaron is Damascus, 
and the head of Damascus is only reason. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is only Ramalia's son. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz and asked the Lord your God for a sign, he said whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ea said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now you know that last verse very well, I'm sure, from Christmas times. Um, what, what is happening now here it was uh, transpired uh, during the year 734 BC. That's about 2007 uh, 2,900 years ago. That's when this happened. In fact, it, it was so long ago, the metal iron was not discovered then yet. You know that? In some places. Um, people did not know about it yet. Um, so it was long ago that this happened. And uh, these two countries, Aram and the northern tribes of Israel, known as Ephraim in this passage, and their kings, Rezin and Pekah, they were... Um, planning and plotting to uh, invade Judah, the southern part of Israel, where Ahaz was the king. And Ahaz was very scared. He was very, very scared, fearful, um, shaken, as the passage said. Um, in those days, the country or the the nations of Aram and Israel and also Judah were very small and were not really that dangerous. The bigger countries, the bigger powers in the world in those days was Assyria in the north and Egypt in the south. They were like the big powers of the world like America and China is today. And uh, so in fact this battle going on or this uh, quarrel happening here is minute and is really actually small. So Ahaz is very, very scared and uh, so the Lord sends his prophet to Ahaz to comfort him. He sends the prophet Isaiah to tell Ahaz, don't worry, I am with you. To tell him, listen, this Aram and uh, Ephraim are only small countries. It's only Pekah and Reason, only Damascus and Samaria. It's not big countries. It's not big powers. I remember my mom comforting me when I was young, um, when uh, we had uh, thunder and uh, when uh, it was a thunderstorm. Then I would be scared of the thunder. And she would say, it's only thunder. It's only the angels talking up there. <laughs> That's what she used to tell me. And in that same way, the Lord comes through the prophet to comfort Ahaz in the face of this crisis. Now, then the second thing that the Lord does through Ahaz is he asks Ahaz to choose a sign. You choose something that will make you believe it. Because that is what a sign was in those days. Signs and wonders was, was done to make people believe. So that they would believe that it's true. So um, what sign would they want? Now Ayers was, uh, was scared and would not, did not want to try the Lord. And so um, uh, I, Isaiah was a bit annoyed. But uh, eventually the Lord gave his own sign. Now the word sign in the Hebrew is ut, a 
And this word ought is a very encompassing word. A big word that encompasses everything. It encompasses your faith. So this sign represents what you believe. This sign makes you believe. This sign is, is the one thing that will tell you it's true. Just as uh, when you look at the sunrise and you see before the sunrise, you see the golden um, horizon, then you know that is the sign that the sun is going to rise. It's, it's, it's a surety. There's no doubt. And the sign, the ought, is what is given in this passage. Now the Lord gives a sign. He says, a child will be born from a virgin. And the child will be called Emmanuel. Now normally when we speak about this verse, that the child will be born and he will be called Emmanuel, child from a virgin, then uh, normally we would place the emphasis on the child, you know, the baby Jesus. But the emphasis in this passage is actually about his name, Emmanuel. It's actually what the name says. The name is the sign. The name that this child gets is the sign for Ahaz. And this name is Emmanuel. A comforting name that says, God is with us. God is with you. So as Aram plots to overthrow you, as Ephraim plots to overthrow you, and their king's reason and Pekka wants to overthrow you, um, know this. The sign says, God is on your side. God is in allegiance with you. He's the one you can rely on. So as Aram comes, as Ephraim comes, and even as the COVID-19 virus comes, the sign is given to each and every one of us. Emmanuel, the child, God is with us. God is our ally in the battle. God is our ally in the struggle that we have now with this virus as well and in every other struggle, every other challenge that we have. God is with us. And that is the message for Ahaz. Stop fearing. Don't be afraid. God is with you. God is your ally. And you can go into allegiance with Him. And therefore, verse 9 says, If you believe in Him, if you rely on your ally, you will, you will stand. And it says, it says here in verse, verse 9, it says, um, If you do not stand firm in your faith, in your reliance on your ally, the Lord, you will not stand at all. And I believe that's what the Lord wants to tell us as well. Now is the time to believe in our God, Him being with us. The sad thing is that uh, you can turn in the Bible to 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 16, and you can read the story of Ahaz and of what happened after the prophet Isaiah came to him. He hardly listened to the prophet. And instead of swearing allegiance to the Lord, he turned to the superpower of Assyria. And the, the, the ruler of Assyria, Assyria in those days was Tiglat Pileser. He turned to him and, uh, for help. And eventually he, he turned even to his religion, took over his God, and even changed the altar in the, chem to, in the temple to the altar that the Assyrians would like. He forsake his allegiance to God. Now the question is for you, my dear brother and sister, who is your ally? Who do you rely on? In whom do you have faith in the face of the crisis we are in now? Where do you go to? Who 
do you go in allegiance with? If you do not believe, stand firm in your faith. You won't stand at all, is what the Lord says. So in this year, 2021, which seems to be rather daunting, rather challenging, in the face of people dying, we believe, and we believe in this child, Jesus Christ, with the name Emmanuel, that says, God is with us. He is with us. We believe in a God that that's with us in these challenging times. This God is with us as we battle this virus, as we create vaccines, as we guard with our masks on. This God is with us. He will never leave you. Please rely on Him. Stand firm in your faith. Do not forsake Him like Ahaz. God is with us. Amen. Lord, thank you that we can turn to you and know that you are here. You are right here with us as we struggle, as we grief, as we, as we fear. Thank you for the prophet that comes and reminds us. Thank you for the sign, the oath, the child born from a virgin, Emmanuel giving us hope. Thank you that re you remind us of your allegiance to us. Thank you that you are our ally and that we can believe in you for helping us. Please bless us, Lord. Please be merciful to us, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen.